Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Since the original release on the N64 system more than two decades ago, Ocarina of Time has been recognized by many to be considered one of the greatest video games ever made. Originally released in 1998, this revolutionary game shocked the world, but does this masterpiece still hold its brilliance 20 years later after it first made its original impact? I took some time to revisit childhood nostalgia and asked myself, can Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time still be considered one of the greatest video games of all time 20 years later? Games like God of War Ragnarok are what many in 2022 would consider the current peak of video gaming. But how could you compare a game that was made in 1998 with a game that was made more than 20 years later? Well, you can't. Sure, Ocarina of Time's graphics are dated, the game has a lack of voice acting, it may even make you feel stuck at times because of it doesn't necessarily tell you how to defeat an enemy or guide you to your next point of interest. But recognizing what makes games like God of War so great helps us understand how Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time help create a foundation of excellence that others could mirror and polish as technology continues to advance and push gaming limits each year. After replaying this title 20 years later, the music, the storyline, the characters immediately reeled me right back in. Although the size of the open world for a game like Ocarina of Time can't be compared to the scale of a game like Assassin's Creed, I still felt small within it, and everything around me felt large, mysterious, sometimes even dangerous. Hello. Some open worlds are too large, some are too small. Ocarina of Time feels just right. The level design of each dungeon and area felt unique and intricate, all sorts of secrets that encouraged me to explore more than I knew I needed to. Even the most challenging and hated dungeons can still be respected for their intelligent design and cool ways to interact in them. I'm talking to you, Water Temple. No, God, please, no, no, no! I can't even fathom to tell you how many times I told myself I needed to go this way. I'm fucking lost. So I'm gonna go that way. Fuck! It's old school. It doesn't hold your hand. It does give you a simple nudge in the right direction, but ultimately you have to explore, experiment, figure out what you need to do once you get there. I can't even explain to you how long it took me to realize I could put blue fire in a jar after using a damn stick to move fire all game. We're playing hot potato with Shadow Ganon. With what the game was limited to in 1998, it still felt very much alive and full. I found myself entering every door that I could wondering what was inside, lifting or blowing up every stone or wall I could find curious what was underneath or on the other side. The scale of the bosses can be impressive fighting monsters that have toenails the size of your body. Although some bosses can be easy to defeat, some still pose a real threat if you're not prepared while walking into that door of hell. It's not necessarily an easy game, especially if you're experiencing it for the first time. The storyline is as fulfilling as ever. You start off as someone who doesn't really know themselves, and you become someone that you're destined to be. From outcast to hero, the journey makes you who you are along the way. The characters in the main story are also unique, interesting, unforgettable, as they play very important roles throughout the entire story. You don't have to have voice acting to be a great game. Even without the ability to voice act each character, each one has a very vivid personality that helps define who they are and who they're going to become. The tad bit of voice acting that does exist helps supplement these personalities. I mean, you can practically hear the voice yourself as you read along the dialogue boxes. Let's face it, I feel like we all have a voice inside our head for what Link sounds like. And just when you get comfortable with the world of Hyrule, a game-changing plot twist completely flips your fucking reality and gives you a reason to revisit locations you've already explored making you want to go back to lots of your favorite places to see how they've been reimagined. While you don't have the ability to press sick button combos to unleash stylistic attacks like modern games, Ocarina of Time has simple but extensive combat mechanics like multiple ways and directions to swing your sword, the abilities to block, dodge, oncoming attacks, the freedom to use all sorts of items and weapons to experiment with the best ways to confront your foes, the combat's very fulfilling as you discover new and better ways to defeat enemies. For being one of the first Legend of Zelda games in the series to have 3D graphics, the ability to lock on and strafe left and right, use camera to look around your environment, use items to navigate levels of the map, feels really polished, feels fun. Last but not least, let's talk about the music. Ocarina of Time's music is master class. Each song almost tells a story about the environment you're in or the character you're interacting with. The music is an important part of a story as the game requires you to learn and play numerous songs in order to progress it. Lots of the songs still hold a place in many of our hearts. I'd even argue that the music is one of the things that kind of stayed with me throughout the years. It's captivating, it's dangerous, it's sad, it's peaceful. Zelda's music has always been top tier, man. 
The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is a phenomenal game to revisit in 2022. There are all sorts of ways to replay the game, like Ocarina of Time 3D, PC emulators, Master Quest, randomizers, and there's even a new PC port currently being polished right now, which will provide longtime Zelda fans with an almost endless list of capabilities and ways to reimagine their nostalgic experience. This brings me back to the original question. Can Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time still be considered one of the greatest video games of all time? I believe OOT has helped lay the foundation for modern adventure games. It's a master in its class and genre, proved itself for more than two decades to be a loved and remembered game. It's filled with places to explore, and it ultimately just feels like a complete game. Unlike other games that release these days. <laughs> no DLC required, no paid content needed, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time has it all. Now it doesn't take a person to be a fan of the Zelda series, or someone who's played it 10 or 20 years ago like me, to recognize the impact that this game has made, or the great foundation that OOT has laid. More than 20 years later, I can confidently say Zelda Ocarina of Time can still be considered one of the greatest video games ever made. But let me know what you guys think. How do you guys feel about this game? Have you played it recently? Did you play it 20 years ago like me? Are you planning on revisiting it? I think now's a better time than ever. Drop a comment below and let me know how you feel. And um, <clears throat> like and subscribe, please, please, please.